All right, let's uh, let's continue here. I was just out filling in the rest of the map, flying around because I hadn't unlocked every piece of the map. So now I flew around and unlocked every piece of the map, and then I flew back here. Now let's pick up this peculiar crystal. Is it an Asian crystal? Etched in the stars, a peculiar crystal lies on the capital's polished floor. What could it be? A peculiar crystal lies on the floor. Upon its surface, an array of lights twinkle like a tiny constellation of stars. Oh, I see. It looks like the hatchet blade from the Warrior of Darkness. Day fourth. Bring honor to the seat of... The Crimson Crystal is talking to me. The, the distorted voice of an ancient rings out in your mind. A moment preserved in the crystal, it would seem. It's a recording. You notice something else glinting up ahead. Is this a scavenger hunt? Constellation crystals. What are these? It's a green one. It's three different ones. Ah, oh, they were just lying here all this time. You find three more crystals lying on the floor. Though they differ in color and decoration, each is identical in shape. They have different constellations though. You focus on the crystals and find that the words they hold ring clearer than before. Behold, my friends. Embraced by the earth and caressed by the wind, vibrant life flourishes. All is right in creation. There can be no greater joy than to use our wisdom for the good of our people. No greater pride. May all know happiness now and forevermore. Huh. I'll just keep these and look for more. There do not appear to be any more crystals in the hall. Perhaps it'd be wise to continue the search outside. some more. Way over there. Is this a scavenger hunt? Is this a thing where I'm supposed to collect hundreds of crystals and then I'll get some sort of reward? Purple and green. Your instincts serve you true, and you discover another two crystals. As you reach out with your consciousness, new voices begin to echo in your mind. The heavens are ablaze, and the land rent asunder. What will become of the world? Is life itself to be denied? Pale green. The purple crystal says, Come what may, we must not surrender to despair. If we but hold fast to hope, we may yet find a path to salvation. Oh, I'll just keep these. Bloop. Any more? The voices tell an incomplete tale. Might more remain to be found?
Here's some... Do these go in my inventory? Huh. You soon discover two more crystals, rather too soon, in fact, as if someone wanted you to find them. The blue crystal says, Everything burns, crumbles, decays. I hear the lamentations of my brethren, and soon there will be only silence. The turquoise crystal says, We will deliver our star from its doom, this we swear. So please, dry your tears. Mm, bloop. <laughs> Whatever awaits at the end of your search, it is plain you have yet to find it. Sure enough, your persistence is swiftly rewarded, this time with three crystals. The sky blue crystal says, The time has come. We shall rewrite the laws of creation, and we shall save our star. The colorless crystal says, From this life our savior born, may I be worthy of the honor. The pink crystal says, I feel my soul turning, slowly but irrevocably, and the power I wield begins to seem terrible. But this is right. It is right. Are these people turning into Asians? The tale the crystals weave seems to be near its end, but it isn't over yet. Almost melancholy inevitability, the twelfth crystal soon reveals itself to your questing eye. The scarlet crystal says, Though salvation is ours, it came at great sacrifice. All that remains is to pray. To pray that we will one day meet again beneath a blue sky. Judging by its testimony, it would seem the voice was recorded in the wake of the final days. But there's only twelve. As you scan the area, another glint catches your eye. Shouldn't there be thirteen or fourteen of these? the brilliant radiance of life, replaced by the sickly glow. Is this to be how it ends, for we who love the star with all our being? No, I will not suffer it to be so. Well, well, we meet again, my new old friend. Oh. Hathlodius. Meow, 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 meow. How good of you to remember.
What do you make of these crystals? Ah, I see you have been collecting stars. I speak of those crystals. They have constellations etched upon them, yes? Yes. High in the heavens, those stars shine their guiding light down upon the lives below. Fitting symbols for the convocation of fourteen, would you not agree? But I only found thirteen. As you will have gathered, each crystal bears an account of the life of a member of the Convocation, as remembered by the Unsundered. Lest you worry, they aren't concepts. They are far too incomplete to be so. But they suffice for imbuing memories within Sundered souls, that they might be restored to their office. Keep them. I am sure Emmett Selk wouldn't mind. So, how fare you of late? You are feuding with Elidibus this time, I believe. Meow, 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 meow. He's so unreasonable. Meow, 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 meow. Hmm. I shall refrain from passing comment on your struggle. It is not my place to do so, long departed as I am. But if I may give voice to a personal desire, I would rather you lived. If you do not, how will you keep your promise to Emmett Selk? The promise to remember. Ah, oh, good point. It must weigh heavy, the burden of all those memories. To one who has lived a life such as yours, I can well imagine how Elidibus's existence might seem hollow, how empty his single-minded pursuit of a half-forgotten cause must appear. But know that his devotion is not without reason. Even if he himself can no longer remember what that reason is, Well, that is quite enough talk about Elidibus. I would see if you can reunite the wayward stars. Hmm? I mentioned before that there was a member of the Convocation who opposed Zodiac's summoning and defected, one whose office was left vacant. Defectors, having been deemed unworthy of commemoration, no crystal exists for the individual in question. Or shouldn't exist at any rate and wouldn't, had a friend not created one in secret. A crystal bearing the forgotten name of her office, along with a magic of her own conceiving, a singular incantation embodying her spirit. Among all the offices, the fourteenth was most unusual. For while the rest sat in Amaro, its holder was charged with gaining an intimate knowledge of the wider world. Wow. 
in the course of her duty, she traveled the length and breadth of every land and befriended countless folk. It's me, isn't it? I'm the 14th. She encountered troubles too, of course. Matters which she could simply have referred to the convocation. But that was not her way. Nay, more often than not, she would call upon her comrades and together resolve matters themselves. Such is the magic sealed within that crystal, the magic to summon the stars to your side. In time of greatest need, should you wish upon it with all your heart, it will surely answer your call. And now it is where it belongs. Oh, there is no need for thanks, but nor will I hear any complaints about it either. After all, I cannot say whether I act of my own volition or by the will of my recreator. Are you saying Emmett Selk wanted me to have this? Oh, he's gone. What do I, I was wondering where you'd disappear to. Oh, hi, Ishtola. What do I do with this crystal? Is something troubling you? Uh, yeah, I think I might be the 14th of the convocation. But, no, I'm fine. No? Very well. I have everything. Let's hurry back to the surface. I have a boat, which somehow got underwater. Hey, we're back. Ah, fresh air at last. I would celebrate my return to dry land with a pot of tea, had we the luxury of time. But we must be prepared for Lydibus. Given what we know, it is plain he will not be deterred from his course. I think we should be prepared to get you guys back to the source before you die. Maybe that's important too, or maybe not. Uh, nor would I, uh, were I him. Not if I meant forsaking everything I loved. Not if it meant, not if it meant forsaking everything I loved. I don't know what I'm saying. That said, I have not forgotten how Emmett Selk sought to find common ground with us for all our misgivings. Ultimately, our differences were not to be bridged, of course, but one must always try. Emmett Selk understood this, and if his gesture resonated with you, Perhaps you might consider reaching out to his brethren. I already tried that, Ishtola. He didn't have any... He didn't want anything to do with it. Though it may all be for naught, you of all people know that there is no such thing as a foregone conclusion. Again, I already tried. I'm way ahead of you, Ishtola. I tried. It was pointless. We're all gonna die. 